This video is going to be about a new gun called the Crow Armor, basically called the Puncher Armor by Crow. So I just typed this into Google. Let's see here. I just want to show you real fast how much it is and the three different colors that it comes in. So black is the one that I got. This right here is the burnt bronze color. So that's pretty awesome looking. Now this is the one that I kind of like. And this is the uh, ocean blue they call this. And so you would try and think to yourself, why the heck would you want a blue gun like this? Or let's say an orange one. But uh, then it occurred to me, let's say that you're walking around with your air gun and you don't want people to think that it's a crazy gun. You get an orange one or a blue one and it's not as intimidating looking and uh, people might not freak out as much. So that's one reason you might want a silly color like this. Now here's one right here that I might actually consider is uh, the OD green. Actually they call this army green. So let's just zoom in here a little bit. If I can do that. Oh that's awesome. So yeah, you can see uh, this is aluminum. Now basically these cost about $569, I believe. You can get them anywhere from Pyramid Air, Air Gun Depot. We're looking at Air Gun Depot right now. It's got extra magazine storage. I think I paid $599 for mine, but uh, I had it like before Air Gun Depot even had them in stock. And unfortunately, I was not able to get my review out that fast. But I was really excited to get mine, and it's uh, definitely a lot of fun. This right here is a black one. I got a 22, and I'm just going to rattle off some stats real fast. It's got a 280cc tank right there. And when I was shooting this, uh, it's going to get a lot of shots. Uh, 6, 10, 20 shots. Doesn't even hardly move the needle at all. It's got extra magazine storage. Comes with two magazines. Has a Picatinny rails, adjustable cheek piece, polymer pistol grip. These armors are going to be available in 177, 22 caliber, and 25 caliber. And like I say, everybody has these for $569 free shipping. And this right here is a review on Crow's latest gun, which is a bullpup. It's called the Crow Armor. A-R-M-O-U-R. Now, among other things, it comes with a case, which you wouldn't think is that handy, but I've already scratched it all up, and it was real handy when I was transporting that up here today. As you can see, I already got it a little dirty, so this is what your case looks like. It has these really cool flip-up handles that make it so you can put those away. I should say this is what my Crow case looks like. It has a puncher armor in there, and I got a little laser sight going on. Got my Hawkeye scope almost ready to go. So I might as well show you now. This is a close-up look at the armor. This is basically based off a Avanix Rainstorm type design. That's all I'm going to say. And so, uh, yeah, it's definitely nice. The length of pull, which is from here to here, is, I believe, 15 inches. It's a little bit big for me, but I can still totally... With someone that has, like, long arms, this would be a good gun for them. It's a bullpup. This is your extra magazine storage where you push it out, you just go... And you got your magazine right there. And, of course, this is where you adjust your cheek piece up and down. This whole body right here is made of aluminum. These are really cool to have. I've had some of these on, like I had one on a Vanix Sniper and it was a really good handle. This is threaded right here. I'm not sure what the thread is yet. It does not fit my Vanix LDC, I know that. But it did unscrew super easily and no baffles came flying out, but that doesn't mean that there's not some in there. So there it is in all its glory. I'm just gonna point out uh, some of the main things. So this does come in 177, 22, and 25. So this right here is a 22. The magazine is just your normal style Marauder magazine. And uh, it looks like, yeah, the 22 holds 12. So it's got a little indicator there to tell you how many you got left. Okay, this is like your basic air gun magazine that's used in a lot of air guns. Uh, basically like a Marauder style magazine, I call it. You spin this clear cover the wrong way. And then you drop your pellet in there. Now that the pellet's in there, it'll hold this wheel. And I can rotate this back and fill all these shots up. So let's just say I did fill all those shots up. You can see I'd have 12 shots. And this is going to click down. you got a nice little indicator there. Okay, the crawl armor is basically a crawl puncher in a new skin. Uh, as well as being kind of a clone of the Vanix Rainstorm 3D Bullpup. So back to the stats. 177 magazine is going to hold 14. The 22 magazine is going to hold 12. And the 25 caliber magazine is going to hold 10 rounds. The FPS on the 177 is 1,070 feet per second. On the 22 that we have right here, we're going to be shooting 975 feet per second. 
and on the 25 you're getting 825 feet per second so you fill it to 200 bar it's a 3000 psi gun the tank is actually 280 cc's it says it includes a single shot tray two magazines and a hard padded case so this has a picatinny rail right here as you can see and it has a riser mount already which you could probably take off i'll just show you how easy this end cap screws off this shroud now sometimes when you do this there will be a spring with baffles in there and it will come flying out but this is all that appears to be in there. I'm not going to investigate this any further at this time so I'm just going to get this back on here because we got actually I'm going to keep it off because the first thing we have to do is clean this gun because uh, when you get a gun from Pyramid Air or Walmart or anywhere um, and it's brand new it's always going to have grease in the barrel. Now if you shoot that gun with grease in the barrel you're going to have big old groups. Uh, it can really mess up your shooting. So, real quick though I'm going to tell you all the stats I know on this gun. It's 8.1 pounds. As you can see, it's got an adjustable cheek piece back there. And uh, you can actually keep a magazine on the other side right there. It goes snap, and you push it out with your finger. So going down that side of the gun, there's not too much going on. Just this snazzy aluminum frame right here. Okay, the other side is a lot cooler looking. And what I thought was super awesome was this uh, fire and safety right here. Okay, it's like in here, so you can never, never accidentally get that onto fire so that's great now look at this good stuff nice labeling here really sharp max pressure 200 bar 2900 psi you got your own serial number this is a 22 caliber made in turkey of course that's the Krell arms logo right there here's that picatinny rail and uh, they give you a little riser mount for your scope which is really cool and uh, that's pretty much all on this side so we did actually find the fill port under here just like I thought you're just gonna put your Fill Pro right in there, and that's cool. It's a good angle. It looks like it's going to be real easy to use. And it looks like, okay, that doesn't uh, slide shut very easily. So I do, once again, I love this grip because uh, when I'm shooting an AR-15, I just hold on to the magazine well. So this is real natural for me. That's the Crow armor right there. So now I'm going to clean this baby. We're going to see what it can do. I almost forgot to show you this uh, awesome polymer grip. Something going on under there. I'm not sure what. Possibly storage. That's definitely a nice high quality grip right there. This is a two stage adjustable trigger. So we'll find out how to adjust that down the road. But it's definitely a cool looking silver. Okay if you're wondering what the first and second stage of a trigger is. Basically the first stage is anywhere that you can pull the trigger where it doesn't go off. So I can feel it right here. From here to here. That's the first stage right there. So I can definitely feel it catch. So I'm going to go down to here, and then the second stage begins right here. So the second stage, if I pull it, it's going to go off. Here we go. First stage. Okay, now I'm about to do the second stage. Here we go. All right. So if I was just pulling the trigger naturally, I'd just go like this. I'd just go. So that seems pretty cool. I have to really shoot it to see what we'll find out in a second here. Also, this barrel is 20 inches long, or 530 millimeters. The overall gun is 31 inches long from uh, the front to the back. Once again, it comes with weaver rails and uh, no open sights. So this is all aluminum right here. And then there's just a little bit of polymer right here. But this is all aluminum. And it does really look beautiful. The length of pull, which is from your trigger back to the end of your butt pad, is actually 15.7 inches. This actually weighs 8.8 .8 pounds, so almost 9 pounds without a scope on it. Which, if it's well balanced, then uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Also, we can see here that it's a side lever. They call this a side lever repeater. So you just cock it like that, and you're ready to rock. The reason you like to have a bullpup is because you're keeping your barrel short, okay? And so you want a short barrel if you're going to be running through hallways or doing any CQB, they call it. Uh, so it's good to have uh, as a home defense weapon or whatever. Um, it's just, they're also just a lot of fun to shoot if you, you get bored of shooting your normal rifles. Oh, she said, or if you want something that looks like a space gun. Yeah, it's definitely got a Starship Troopers aspect to it. If you want to see the butt pad, there it is. It's a nice rubber butt pad back there. Okay, right here you can see that's a power wheel that's going to let you put it on low or high. So that's cool. We're going to check that out closer later. But to load this baby, basically you fill your magazine up. Just cock the lever back. And that's pretty much all you have to do. There's no kind of release or anything like that. And it's really weird, but you're actually going to slide it in this way. Like that, so I'll show you what I mean. Once this is back, you just put... Okay, now... It just slides right in like that. I know it's kind of 
I know it's kind of different, but now if your magazine's empty, there's a rubber stopper, so you won't be able to put this down. So I'm not going to put that down with a pellet in there because I'm about to clean this. I don't want a pellet stuck in the barrel, so just put that down. And that did seem really smooth when I was putting it back. So uh, so far, I like everything about this gun. Okay, there is that power adjustment knob. So let's give that thing a turn and see what happens. Okay, so this does not have like detents in it, like low or high. Looks like you can just turn the rifle anywhere between low and high that you want. So you have low, medium, high, whatever you want. I guess if you want to upgrade your rifle, you could put some markings on here so you know exactly where you're at. The manufacturer says this gun is for target practice and small game hunting. So we're about to uh, hunt some bullseyes right now. I got everything I need to clean my new Crow Puncher armor. And uh, the main thing is this crown saver right here. And this is basically a nylon cleaning rod that you can use to clean your air gun. Now, don't use a boar snake to clean an air gun because the boar snake has a little piece of metal that will totally jack you up in your barrel. So I like to use this hops right here. It's about three bucks at Walmart. It's what the U.S. military uses, so I'm sure it's good stuff. And uh, you don't really need this, but there's a little bit of gun oil. And I'm using two-inch patches right here. You can actually make these out of t-shirt if you wanted, but this is another thing that's really cheap at Walmart. So this is what you don't want to use right here. You don't want to use this metal cleaning rod. Although, if you had a 177 cleaning rod and use a little method where you put a straw in the end of the barrel, then uh, you know it might be okay if you're really, really careful. But generally, you want to stick to those nylon ones. So now, if possible, I'm going to go ahead and just unscrew this shroud by hand. Okay, that's not going to be too easy. Let me put my gloves on. Now, you want to make sure your air gun is unloaded, okay? So if you got to pull the trigger and shoot it at the phone book or the ground or something, definitely do that before you start. So this broke free right here. I'm just going to unscrew it. Sometimes these take a lot of turns, and you're like, what the heck is it even working? But it is. It just has really fine threads, and you might have to turn this thing a ton of times, but just be patient. Okay, I just felt it kind of break free back here, and so I'm just going to really carefully and very straight, I'm going to pull it out. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Hopefully I can get it back in. This is what the other end looks like, kind of weird. So that's your shroud right there. Just remember which way it goes in, we're going to put that aside. Now this gun looks even cooler. I like to wear gloves because this stuff's really stinky. You don't want to spill that stuff in your house. Super stinky. With these things, you got to gently pull. Not hard at all. Just so you got it about right there. Okay, now that's ready to push through your barrel. So you just speed this down your barrel, and you're going to see it poke out there at the end of the action. All right, when you see it peek the end out right there, you just kind of grab it. Sometimes an Allen wrench or something is handy for that. Okay, now the solvent that you use your gun, um, there might be rubber seals in here that you don't necessarily want to get that on too much. You can get them on there, but if you do, just wipe them off. And also, don't just think you can slop that stuff all over because you want to try not to uh, get it all over if you can. So here's what you can do. You just take another towel or something like this. Kind of wrap it in here. And again, if you get that on, this, uh, on your gun, it just wipes right off. And uh, it's actually pretty good. But, you know, kind of go like this. You gotta put one patch because if you put two patches, it just won't even go through. At least on my 177. A 22 might be a little different. We're gonna find out. I'm just gonna put one patch right there. Now, I'm telling you again, don't knock this over. I usually just pull that out and dip it right in there like that. Okay, now I'm gonna pull the end like this and it's gonna cinch that up a little bit. See that right there? Okay, now I'm going to pull that through. Okay, I've seen dirtier, but that's uh, definitely, we got something out of there. Now I'll do that one more time. There's our second patch. I did a double patch that time. I'm giving this uh, gun high marks for being... Uh, easy to clean. The Gamo Swarm took me about two hours, okay, and so far this has been like five or ten minutes. Patch number three looking pretty clean, looking pretty good, so I'm gonna do another doubler. I got the patches so they're more or less coming out clean here, so I'm gonna go ahead and screw this shroud back on. Once again, you're just gonna slide it in easy. 
don't force it if it's not going to want to go. See, so it's not going so far very good, so I don't want to force it though. Okay, it's usually just an O-ring or something you got to get past. Okay, I see it. I see where it needs to go to. Okay, I was putting this down here and screwing it in and I didn't know if it had gone all the way because as you can see there's like a barrel holder right here. Right there is where the shroud ended. So it actually, it's only about 12 inches long or so. It's shoved in here and you couldn't see anything. It just basically stopped right here and I started screwing it in and it screwed in until it was tight. And so it looks like this part of the barrel is kind of free floating and you got the shroud that starts here. And definitely from here to there, is a uh, pure airspace you could definitely put some baffles in there I think they have something called K baffles where you can just order the right size but I'll figure all that out for you guys and uh, put some nice baffles in there to quiet this thing down but I'm already ordering a moderator adapter for that so uh, I'll show you that in a couple days here now I can get a scope on this baby and uh, start shooting some groups I think I still got some daylight Okay, my scope's definitely not going to clear that laser right there, so I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, it's almost getting dark, I almost have to leave, so I'm going to blow some stuff real fast, see if I can sight this laser in at 35 yards, get some groups. Alright, today we're going to be using the 18 grain JSB Exact 22 caliber pellets. I like the 18 grain better than the 15 grain because they're usually better for target shooting. So I want to show you how easy it is to load these magazines. You just uh, take the wheel with it right there. They just drop right in there. Okay, no fuss. And then once that's uh, closed, there's no way they're coming out. Now this magazine is tricky. You just have to pay attention to this line right here. That goes in the front. So you basically have the clear going backwards towards you. Pull the charging handle back all the way. Now it seems kind of weird, but you're just going to shove it in right like that with the round part going in. And there it is. That's uh, locked in there just like it's supposed to be. So it seemed like it didn't really like being loaded from the other side with the square end in. So definitely you just have to put that round in and slide it right in like that. It's sliding super easy. Here's the nanometer on this thing. And so it looks like the green zone's from 100 to 200 bar. Uh, you don't want to go past 200 bar. 200 bar is 3,000 PSI or 2,900 PSI. In addition to coming with two magazines, you get this fill pro, but you're going to have to buy this part right here. This is a uh, 1 8 BSPP threads, 1 8 BSPP, and this little part right here is a 1 8 foster fitting quick disconnect. So, uh, I want to tell you something about these threads right here. Now, you don't want to get your threads up at the top here, you want to stay a couple down because if you get some of this stuff shredded off in there, then that's going to end up inside your air gun, uh, and you don't want that. You you don't want this Teflon tape plugging up your air gun. So, when you connect your quick disconnect, make sure that you keep that Teflon tape down away from that edge right there. Okay, so this is a really good uh, fill port right here. I like the way it's easy to get to, good angle right there. Now, uh, this is actually a, a cover that closes. It's just a little sticky because it's like greased in there. I'm just gonna snap this into my fill tank right here. Okay, that seems like it's in there pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna fill this really slowly. Oh, you can see how slowly I'm gonna fill this. I'm just gonna keep my eye on the tank that's on the gun. So generally, as soon as you bleed your air hose out, which is right here, this nanometer is going to stop going down. So I get it right to 200. I bleed this as quick as possible, and now I'm pegged at 200. Once your air pressure's out, you can pull this out. All right, now we're ready. This laser sight is so badass. Check out that tree way over there. I believe that's about the 45-yard mark. It's my dot right there. I got to clear the barrel, so I'm going to shoot this. Okay, I just got this Picatinny Weaver bubble level right here, so that's going to help me make sure my gun's level when I'm sighting in my laser sight there at 35 yards. So these are really handy to have, under 10 bucks. They fit on any Picatinny style rail and they come with a little Allen wrench. Okay, I'm not sizing my pellets today, but I am using this single shot tray that they supplied, so slide it right in like this. There we go, snapped in. Now I can 
load my pellets down this ramp and uh, you always got to use your single shot tray if you want to get super tight groups. Okay, so I was aiming uh, right here for the middle and I did not even hit the paper, so this is going to take a little bit. Okay, that's more like it, so I just need to bring my pull impact that way and then we'll uh, be able to get this started here. Okay, it looks like my laser battery is dying, but uh, I went ahead and tuned it right up to this hole, kind of, what I could see from it. So, I predict I'm going to hit in here somewhere in my next shot. I really don't know what to say, okay? I guess I'm sighted in in two shots. Now I can use my BR-50 to see if I'm really sighted in. So if I shoot all of these, I'll be able to see if I need to click one way or the other. Okay, this is my third shot I've ever shooting this gun. And uh, I actually got a pellet jammed in the single shot tray. It kind of went backwards instead of forwards. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second here. But yeah, that's pretty darn good, considering I couldn't even really see what I was shooting because the laser was so bright. So uh, I'm going to say this is going to be an accurate gun, but we got to do more testing. It's starting to really get dark out here, so I need to pack up before I uh, can't see what I'm packing. All right, so I was using the single shot tray, and I actually got a pellet that went backwards and got stuck in there. So it is really getting really dark. I think that's just my cue to go ahead and take off. The cool thing is that it does fit in its case very nicely with a laser on it. So if you get one of those lasers, obviously uh, it's gonna shoot just fine with those at close range, so it uh, might be something cool to leave on there. Okay, I'm back home and I have my bullseye that I did with uh, this laser sight right here. So I found out some good news. This foregrip right here is actually removable and underneath it is a rail, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a bipod on this. All you need is a screwdriver with a fairly big end on it, and it appears that an Allen wrench is probably the same size that goes to your scope rings. Let's check that out. You can see we've got three different size nuts that fell out of there. One for the Phillips screw and two for the hex head Allen wrench. You know, this should just slide right off. Oh, very nice. And look at that. we got a nice Picatinny rail right underneath there. So now I just got your basic Caldwell Harris type bipod. Slide that guy on. Okay, now we're set. Check this out. Super awesome. This was the second shot that I ever took with the Crow armor, and I sighted my rifle in in one shot, technically, and this is how I did it. I was aiming right here from 20 yards away off the bench. So I hit right here. So I put my laser back here, and I clicked up and over until I was hitting right here. And then uh, I took the, I took, I aimed right in the center here. I took a shot, and that's where I hit. So that's how you sight your rifle in in one shot. So Jennifer was actually just uh, helping out to hold the rifle up here. So she's actually got to go. See you later. So it's just us guys for the rest of this video. You probably saw Tyrannosaurus Rex earlier today. We shot the hat off his head numerous times. He's one of my old friends. Okay, the armor does have this little teeny, I guess you'd call it a riser mount. But I'm always afraid that my scope might not be tall enough. So. I always get tall rings when I get air guns. These are some Weaver style, fourteen ninety five at Walmart. Now with the high rings, I might be able to clear this laser right here. If not, though, I'll just take it off. And just for fun, I actually got this for my Y Rock HW forty four. But I might throw this old school red laser on there too. If you're really cool, you'd have a green laser and a red laser. One would be for short range, and one would be for long range. The other thing about a laser is you always have to mount it on the top or on the bottom. You can never mount it on the side because it'll mess up your aiming. Just trust me, it's not good. All right, this uh, crawl armor lucked out and is gonna get a 
three or four hundred dollar Hawkeye scope on it. Now with all your scope stuff you always don't want to over tighten any of your Allen wrenches or stuff like that. The other thing is with these Allen screws you need to make sure you wiggle that thing all the way in before you start turning because I always get excited and on the last Allen screw out of like eight I'll strip it so it's no good. Okay so that's looking really good I'm actually going to hold it up and see exactly where I want this at and then I'll tighten that up. Okay, it's a good thing I checked my eye relief because it did end up being a little more forward uh, when I was holding the gun comfortably. I always like to not tuck my head, so you should be holding your gun between your eye and the target, kind of in the middle of your body. And then basically, you're standing with your head how you would naturally stand straight, uh, straight up and down, uh, instead of tucking your head in there. So basically, that's how I like to do it, and I'll make a video on that one day. Once I got all my bolts back together, I'm not going to tighten them so much. Using your bubble level right here, you just make sure your gun is level. And then uh, you can go ahead and use a plumb bob outside to straighten your crosshairs right there. Or you can actually use the window sill in your house. Those are usually uh, pretty level right there. Now that is a badass gun right there. Nice 12 power Hawkeye scope. Some tall rings. Bubble level. Caldwell. Bipod. Great little gun. So if this thing shoots as good as it looks... I'm going to have a keeper, and I have a feeling if it does shoot good, I'm going to put this thing head-to-head -head against almost every gun I get. Now, this gun right here is in the price range of hat sand. Okay, so you can get a bull boss for a little cheaper than this, but what I'm saying is hat sands come a little bit rough, and they can be, actually be accurized, uh, which I'm going to do a video on some different ways that you can accurize a hat sand. But, you know, they come a little rough. Um, and so this thing though, this thing's finished beautifully and uh, like I say, I've only taken six to nine shots with this and look at this nanometer, I barely budged at all. Nine shots and I got lots of green left. Pretty good. I got this really nice adapter from Donnie FL that would basically screw in the end of my shroud right here and allow me to have one half UNF threads. So, I did that and it turned out that the Huguet moderator that I fitted to this was clipping the pellets and I was getting one foot groups. Crawls and hat sands are notorious for not having the barrels lined up with the shroud. And so basically, my barrel is going a little bit crooked and so the pellets would not make it all the way out the moderator without clipping it. And so I know that it was clipping it because it left marks on the end of my $200 Huguet. So Donnie said to go ahead and use the next size up LDC he recommends on Krauss and Hot Sons. So let's say you have a 22, so you use a 25 caliber LDC. Except I used my 30 caliber Huguet, which is actually about $300. And that's the one that it left three strike marks on right at the end, right around here. And so. Unfortunately, even with a 30 caliber hole, this 22 caliber was not making it out the hole. So I would say if you had a 357 LDC, you might be able to use it on here. But as of now, I'm going to say you cannot use an LDC on this gun unless maybe it's a 357. You definitely cannot use a 30 caliber. And I hit right in the center and then I just kind of did three more and they were going the same hole 22 yards away now I used to always say why the heck would anyone ever want to shoot a gun at 25 yards that's ridiculous right but then I realized now I have to do a special mission tomorrow or whenever I feel like staying up late I'm gonna go ahead and ice some rats and the farthest I can shoot is from 22 yards away so now I do care if I'm gonna hit you know which quadrant I can hit right here because I don't want to have shot placement go the wrong place. How you doing, Luke? <laughs>